Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share the solution for question 11 for Pure Math 1, Variant 3, May June 2025. Question 11 is the last question in the paper. Um, and it's uh, related to functions and inverse functions. All right, let's just go through the question. The function f is defined by f of x equals x squared plus 4ax plus a for all real values of x, where uh, a is a constant. And then there's another function, defined function g, such that the inverse of g, or g inverse of x, is equal to the cube root of 2x minus 4, for uh, and x is any real number. So, uh, part A of the question, given that the range of f is uh, f of x larger than or equal to negative 33, find the possible values of a. Now, uh, one of the things that you have to notice very quickly is that the function f of x has only one unknown. Right? x is a variable, a is a constant, and there's only one unknown constant, which is a. And that means if you know one information, about f of x, right? One x, one information about f of x, you can then set up an equation uh, using f of x, so that uh, you can find this value of this unknown, the value of a. So, what is that information provided? Here it says f of x, the range of f, of, uh, the range of f, sorry, the range of f is f of x larger than or equal to negative 33. So, uh, so this means that f of x has a minimum value. All right, minimum value of negative 33. Now, f of x here, you can see it, this is a quadratic function. So for quadratic function, it has only two shapes, which is um, a smile uh, parabola or a frown parabola, right? So this is a positive quadratic. You can see the coefficient of x squared here is a positive one. Therefore, you have a positive quadratic and therefore a smiling curve, right? So you can think about it as a smiling curve. And a smiling curve only has a minimum. And uh, it's given here that that minimum value is negative 33. Okay, so this is how it looks like. That means, right, you have to find a way to set up this uh, equation such that you can relate it to negative 33. So the best way, the best way uh, to do this is by expressing your quadratic function in, uh, in the form of a uh, completed square form. So, completed square form, completed square form, uh, we will use this formula, okay? So, this formula here is the formula for converting your quadratic function where the, the coefficient of the, co the, the coefficient of x square for your quadratic function must be 1, okay? So, if you, if the coefficient of your quadratic function, the coefficient of x square, or the leading coefficient for your quadratic function is 1, then you can use this formula to rewrite your quadratic uh, function, or quadratic expression, in the completed square form. Okay, so first term uh, here has 1 as its coefficient, second term has b as its coefficient, either plus or minus, and the remaining constant here is plus c. Okay, so we will use this. Now, in this case, uh, it's a plus, right? For b here, it's a plus, so we will use plus. So if we do this, we'll get this expression. Okay, so this is called the completed square form. Now, in the completed square form, everything outside of this bracket is the minimum value. Okay, so this is why we want the completed square form. So negative 4a squared plus a, this entire part here, is the minimum value of the quadratic. So the minimum value of the quadratic here is given as negative 33. So you can then equate this negative 4a squared plus a as negative 33. So now you have an equation with only one unknown, which is a, which means you probably can solve this one. So if you uh, rearrange this, you'll get 4a squared minus a minus 33 equals 0. And this is a quadratic equation in a. Well, and then uh, at this point, you can use any method you want, any method that you are familiar with, any method that you are comfortable with in order to solve a quadratic. Uh, in this case, for example, here, factorization. If you factorize, you get these. Okay, These two factors multiply together to get 0. And then you can use the zero product principle. So that means 4a plus 11 is equal to 0 or a minus 3 equals 0. And of course, finding uh, the possible values of a at this point is trivial. 
and so you should get uh, a equals 3 or a equals negative 11 and you have if you have uh, obtained these values then you have done a good job all right so then let's move on to uh, part b uh, part a here is i think not so hard as long as you know how to do completed square form uh, and all the work here will be quite simple all right so part b now given instead okay, when they say the word instead here that's a keyword there when you see the word instead that means whatever you have found before will not be used okay whatever value of a that you have found before will not be used so it's sort of like a reset all right so here given instead that f g g 0 is 96 find the value of a that means right uh this is a composite function uh where one function is inside another function and in this case inside another function so uh this uh if you if you remember in in order to evaluate a composite function you start from the right going to the left okay so uh here you have to evaluate first g of zero and then the result of that you substitute into g and then the result of that you substitute into f so that's how uh to evaluate a composite function you start from the right to the left now if we recall the two functions that we have right the, into, the information that we have we have f of x the function f of x that's that's fine that's great right uh here we reset a so we're not going to use the a that we found in uh, the previous part. Now here, what is given is not G. What is given is G inverse, right? Or the inverse of G. So this function we cannot use directly. So what we have to do is, we have to uh, find the function G from the G inverse. Okay, so the way to do that is, uh, if you remember, if a function can be, can be inverted, then you can invert the inverse to get the original function. So that means G inverse, if you inverse the G inverse, right, you'll get G. So our aim right now is to perform the inverse uh, of G inverse. Okay. So usually, uh, if you remember how to do this from uh, high school right, uh, or secondary school, right, you can assign uh, the function name as Y and the function description or the function definition um, as usual. And then your aim is to make x the subject now okay so you can cube both sides right you can uh, add four to both sides and then divide by two um, and you will get x equals y cubed plus four over two so now you have x in terms of y and then you can change this into uh, g okay because if we're working with g inverse and g inverse inverse is g so now this if we call it gx will be x cubed plus four over two so this is our gina we have found the function g we can now we can then now proceed to evaluating okay, evaluating fgg0 so uh again uh remember when you are evaluating composite function you must start from the right and then uh, to the left and then to the left right so we start with g of zero so g of zero right just substitute zero into g right you'll get zero cubed plus four divided by two and you'll get two so g of zero is two Next, we need to find g of g of 0, and g of g of 0 is just g of 2, okay? g of g of 0 is really g of 2 because g of 0 is 2, so just substitute 2 into g. So substitute 2 into g, into g you have 2 cubed plus 4 divided by 2 and you get 6. Alright, so now we want to do f of g of g of 0, and since g of g of 0 is 6, we're just need, we just need to find f of, f of 6. So we do f of 6, substitute 6 into f, right? And of course, there's a here. We have to keep that. So you have 6 squared plus 24, a plus a equals 96. If you simplify that, right, you'll get 25a equals 60. So now this is a super simple uh, expression or equation to find the value of a for. And of course, you know that there's only one value of a here. So here you have a linear expression. So then you just divide both sides by 25 and you get A equals 12 over 5. And um, that's it. This is very simple question. As long as you know how to set it up, the main important thing that you have to be able to do is actually uh, perform the inverse function and, of course, evaluating uh, composite functions in the correct order. Okay. So once you are able to do that, then you will be able to obtain A equals 12 over 5 and you have done a very good job.